There are only 11 Democratic primaries or caucuses left, but Senator Bernie Sanders claims he can still catch Hillary Clinton. The senator from Vermont would actually need to win 67% 60 of the remaining pledge delegates in order to take the lead over Hillary Clinton by just one single pledge delegate. I mean, it's theoretically possible, but given his past performances in diverse states with huge delegate prizes like New Jersey and California still to come, not likely, not probable. Sanders says, though, that he and his campaign, they are not going anywhere until the last ballot is cast. But with Hillary Clinton's pledge delegate lead and her not so secret super delegate weapon, Hillary Clinton, she has really already shifted to the general election. What about his taxes? So we'll get around to that, too. Because when you run for president, especially when you become the nominee, that is kind of expected. My husband and I have released 33 years of tax returns. We got eight years on our website right now. So you got to ask yourself, why does he want to release them? Jeff Zeleny, you know, you cover these campaigns, the Democratic side, very, very closely. Scale of 1 to 10, how much is Hillary in the general election right now, and how focused is she on Bernie Sanders? 11. 11 on She is, has <laughs> moved beyond Bernie Sanders at least six days a week. But these Tuesdays, these pesky Tuesdays when there are election <laughs> days, she suddenly is reminded that, gosh, Bernie Sanders is still hanging around. So again, on this Tuesday, when voters in Kentucky and Oregon have their say in this, she is likely to not win both of those states. They're actually fighting hard in Kentucky. Hillary Clinton is in Louisville, Kentucky this morning, and she'll be campaigning there today and tomorrow. They added that to her schedule. They believe Kentucky's a place they can win because it's a closed Democratic primary. She's done much, much better in places where independents can't vote here. But the Clinton campaign has shifted almost entirely to Donald Trump, but they do not um, want to finish these 11 contests, which are eight states and three territories, um, the uh, District of uh, Columbia, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Uh, they don't want to finish this 0 for 11. They want to win some. They think they can win Kentucky this week. California and New Jersey uh, also is you know, a complicating thing because that basically ends it. They want to go out on a win here because it's damaging to her, they think, that Bernie Sanders is winning. But mathematically speaking, even if he wins by that 67%, like you said, he still needs superdelegates to put him over the top. And, of course, we know where those superdelegates stand. You know, it's interesting. You, you say Hillary's at 11 now in terms of, of focusing on the general election. And Bernie Sanders really has gone down to, say, two or three in terms of going after Hillary right. Clinton. I, I think that's safe to say also. You know, the campaign did put out a fundraising uh, plea, which caused some controversy. It said the Democratic Party must decide if they want the candidate with the momentum who is best positioned to beat Trump or if they are willing to roll the dice in court disaster simply to protect the status quo. Again, Phil, that caused some controversy. But, you know, the Clinton people didn't even seem to get that upset about that. What they do get frustrated with, and the one thing you can still sort of get them to, you know, get a little bit hot over is California. They just hate the notion that they may have to spend money and time in California. It's the money issue that matters more than anything else. California is expensive. And if they have to go into that state, a huge state, and spend money, that's money they can't spend on the general election. And it's not just that they'd have to spend it when California comes up. It's right now. Right now is when they want to be setting the path forward for their general election. The battleground state staffers, the spend in the battleground states, how they're laying out their general election plan is what they're doing right now. As Jeff said, all they care about is a general election. But they can't put all of their money there. They can't focus all of their financial resources and even staffing resources there until they know what they have to do with California. I think there's a lot of frustration within the campaign right now of we're ready to shift entirely, not just in our message, but also on our finances, also on our staffing, and we just can't do it yet as long as California is still out there. I think that's why Kentucky matters so much. They want Kentucky in a way that could put them over the top if you add superdelegates in and all of a sudden say, look, we've won this already, let's start shifting everything. They want to be looking at the battleground states, right? right? And, and Jill, we had these Quinnipiac polls that came out this week from the battleground states, from Florida, from Ohio, from Pennsylvania, Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. You know, in Ohio, Donald Trump's up, uh, which is something I think that caught a lot of people by surprise here. This is where the Clinton people would like to be right now. And I mean, I think we can expect after each candidate kind of coalesces and, and secures the nomination, you kind of expect to see a little bit of a bump. But I mean, Donald Trump is very much banking that voters in these states are going to wind up, you know, 
turning to him. He, you know, is trying to court the same base that, that he attracted during the primary, these white working class voters. But as we all, I mean, we've all seen the polling on his favorability numbers, and, and it's very clear, you know, regardless of what these polls say, that he has a serious hill to climb when it comes to winning over women, when it comes to winning over minorities. I mean, the, the task for him is very large. Uh, you know, and Alex, I mean, your paper put out a story this week saying that Hillary Clinton is trying to focus, you know, on these Rust Belt states, the upper, uh, you know, interior industrial Midwest, trying to plant some seeds there that will help her in the general election. They know this is where Trump could make some inroads. And, and I think, you know, look, I think Democrats look at those uh, swing state numbers and see them as wildly optimistic for Donald Trump. But uh, they do also look at a state like Ohio and recognize that you know, it's not a state with an uh, overwhelming minority population. It is a relatively older state, and it's a heavily you know, industrial or former industrial state. Uh, in a general election, Trump, you know, Ohio is probably a better state for Trump uh, than anywhere else on the swing state map. Uh, you know, Florida, I think you have to look with real skepticism at that poll. Uh, anything that, that shows Hillary Clinton uh, drawing only about 63 percent, I think it was, of the non-white vote in a state where the Republican mayor of Miami is saying he can't support uh, Donald Trump. I think you have to be very, very careful with those numbers. So this campaign taking place not just all over the United States right now, but also in France, Jeff Zeleny, the Cannes Film Festival, mm -hmm. which I just like to say whenever I can right now. There, there's a documentary premiering, uh, and it's being produced by Steve Bannon, who is the executive chairman of Breitbart News, and it deals with a book that Peter Schweitzer wrote in 2015 about Clinton Cash. An hour-long documentary looking at the Clintons very closely. I think we have a trailer of it right now. Greetings from Washington. I want to thank all of you for your work to root out corruption. Enormous amounts of money have flowed to the Clintons from foreign governments, foreign financiers, and businesses. Oh, yeah. I, I got to pay our bills. Before we had to worry about money from Wall Street and big labor, now we have to worry about it coming from around the world and infecting our politics. With the Clintons, nothing is sacred. Everything is for sale. Jeff Zeleny, you know, the Clintons have been dealing with opposition research. They've been dealing, uh, you know, with, with, with barbs from the right for a very long time. I guess the question is, what scares them? Is this the type of thing that scares them? Is this different than the emails? I think that this does not scare them as much as some of the unknowns. This is all known. We know what's in Peter Schweitzer's book. That was all litigated last year. Now this is the movie version of it, and it's playing to a different audience. I mean, the, the general election audience may not be entirely familiar with that, so they're definitely going to get um, sort of more of an airing of that. But I think the thing that worries the Clinton gaming the most are things they can't control. They know everything that's in this book. They know every word that's in the movie. You know, there's not a lot of there there. For any sort of skeptic of the Clintons, how they made their money, what they think this is more evidence of that. But there aren't a ton of smoking guns. Every news organization has gone over that book. Yes, there are a lot of questionable things, but it's, it isn't all that new. But the emails, the FBI investigation, which we don't talk about a lot, that is still hanging out there. That is the thing that worries the Clinton campaign because they cannot control what happens to that. Uh, this movie is something that uh, you know has already been scripted. The FBI investigation is not over yet, and they don't know the ending. And she still hasn't testified yet, or she's she not. still hasn't you know spoken as far to them. As we know, yet. she's not. And, and, and when that happens, that in and of itself could be interesting to see. All right, guys, stand by. Coming up, the Trump ticket: what the CEO needs in a running mate, and how the Clinton campaign plans to take on the billionaire if Hillary Clinton is the nominee.